So this is going to cover the lab techniques video on uh, Argos Education. Uh, so lab techniques, uh, you're basically just learning how to maneuver around the online lab environment. Um, this and everything's labeled here. This is your analytical balance squirt bottle pipette. This is your reagent bottle, right? But we have our, our um, solutions chemicals in uh, our reagent bottle speakers. And then over here, this you're not going to have this tab right here but under this plus sign right here is where you can get your other supplies you know um, I'm going to bring a few of these down here I'm going to need them eventually but you just grab on it <clears throat> bring it down and they're also named as well so anything you you should be taking notes on on a lot of these uh on all of these labs right you should be taking notes because the notes are going to be able to be used at the end of the semester when you take your lab exam. So lab exam is based off of uh, what we perform in the actual labs um, online, as well as um, <clears throat> I believe a couple in your textbook, um, lab one and lab seven, I believe from your textbook, you know, you also be tested on that. So here, uh, a lot of introduction background. Again, I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna go through every single page here, uh, but I do wanna point out some things um, when we're answering questions. So sometimes we're going to be manually putting in a number, right? So like for this number of reagent bottles, well, I only see one bottle of zinc here. So I would just enter my answer here. And then I get some feedback, you know, good job. You know, if the answer was wrong, then it would say, hey, you know, try again. And we're going to go to the next one here. So, um, I'm gonna open this up and then I'm gonna put the wayboat in there. So what we wanna do is we wanna tear this out. We wanna want this these values here to be zero. So we hit zero and then we can go ahead and I can put something in there. I'll, like for instance, I'm just gonna put the zinc in here. I'll just kind of demonstrate it. And don't use Safari for this. Uh, don't use Microsoft Edge. Don't use an iPad, cell phone, tablet. Use a computer laptop with Windows or um, you can use an iMac, MacBook, as long as you're using Chrome web browser on your PC or your um, iMac, MacBook, right? <clears throat> um, but make sure you're using Chrome. Um, some of this stuff just does not work if you're using Safari web browser, um, it's not gonna work right. So here I'm going to take this and I'm, I'm given two options once I let that go uh, to shake 1.1 1. 1 gram out or 1 gram out. So let's just do the 1 gram and you'll see it here. And I'm going to put, uh, oh, actually I need to back this up just a little bit. Let me close this out. Here it is right here. So, oh. so sorry about those pop-ups there. Um, what it's asking for here is at the, the error we have here. So this is just a guessing game, but the very last digit here. So I'm going to just put 0 0.0002, right? Now we're next, we're going to be just, you know, <clears throat> putting some of this material in here. So let me get rid of this. I'll get a new one over here. There's an unlimited supply up there. I need to zero this out, so I'm going to tear it. there tap it twice and i do have about two grams in here now if i hit record it's not going to record the value so this is just this goes for every single experiment you're going to be doing through here some students go look it's not recording it's not recording right hit it a couple times another thing you can do is you can come over here and you can actually put the cursor in here make sure the cursor is blinking in there so if my cursor is blinking in there, I know it's active, and then I can hit record, right? And then we'll just move on. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna just jump a few screens. So you're gonna be doing the rest of that there, um, doing some masses and some, you know, the baskets there, uh, and then you're gonna get some discussion questions. So I think the discussion questions is what I really wanted to get into. Uh, the rest of that, you're gonna be just practicing your techniques, recording some values. Um, and then there are uh, a couple of calculations that we need to make regarding random error here. 
So this is equation one that they talk about right here. Equation one. So the random error of average equals the error in a measurement over n to the one half power. When they say n to the one half power, n to the one half power is the same thing as the square root of n, right? So I have the equation written up over here, right? So the random error of average, we're going to designate as s. Error in the measurement is our standard deviation. And then we have the square root of n to represent n to the one half power, which gives us this nice looking equation right here. So s, our random error of average is equal to the standard deviation or the error in one measurement over the square root of n. And a couple of things that we also need to do is we don't we don't put percentages into the calculation, right? So for this 10%, that's equal to 0 0.10 in decimal form. 1% is 0 0.01 in decimal form. Uh, so if we're looking at some calculations, uh, let me see what page the calculations are on. Uh, here on page 27 here, um, this is to give us an understanding of, of errors and, and how we can reduce the amount of error uh, in an experiment. So <clears throat> if we go back here, you'll notice I can either tap at 0.1 gram or 1 gram. So if I want 2 grams, I just need to tap this twice. If I want two grams, I have to tap this 20 times. But what happens is there's a larger error with these larger shakes than the smaller ones, right? So there's a smaller error average when we're doing more of them. So uh, the random error is 2 over 20, the square root of 2 over 20, uh, which makes it a really – really small um, random error that we have, uh, if we could reduce that by just putting in smaller increments here. <clears throat> and here's a calculation that we're going to need to use this for when it's talking about um, our uh, number of measurements and the error that we're going to have. So here, um, if some way that we do this, some process that we do is um, creates a 4% error each time we do it, right? <clears throat> but we need that to be smaller. We need to be less than 1%, which means that we need to make more of these smaller uh, increment measurements down here to reduce that. But uh, it's asking here, what's the minimum number of measurements that have to be collected and averaged out? So what we do here is we're just going to take this formula here. And if we want the random error S to be 1%, and we know what the standard deviation is, which is uh, 4%. How many trials do we have to do, measurements do we have to do, in order to make this equal 1%? So we, we're just going to be rearranging this problem here. So if we rearrange this problem here, S is equal to standard deviation over square root of N n is equal to the standard deviation squared over s squared. So the number of measurements is equal to 0 0.04, or 4%, squared, divided by 1%, or 0 0.01 squared. And that answer is we need at least 16 measurements. Then you have to do some calculations regarding um, the mean, right, the range. Uh, so you should – mean just means – it's another word for average, right? So we, we should be able to, to determine or calculate averages from here. And then we get to this uh, question here on page 30 here. Uh, from the results that we see here, 
uh, decide whether you're able to demonstrate the masses, the masses of the four baskets um, differ meaningfully. That is, do the baskets masses differ by more than the range of the measurement? So you're going to see that the measurements between the baskets are smaller than the range from the heaviest basket to the lightest basket. So the error range for the same basket was smaller than the differences between the same baskets or the, between the different baskets. So the differences are meaningful. Yes. And then we're going to have to do one more calculation here um, using our formula from equation one. Uh, suppose we had to uh, make 10 additions. So this is the value for n. So, so n is equal to 10. Suppose the pipe had had a 10 per chance random error in the amount delivered. So that's our standard deviation. So n is equal to 10. Standard deviation is equal to 0 0.10. And you can calculate the percent error um, from that there. So you're going to take, uh, remember, to, to do the square root of n, not just, not just n for that particular calculation. And that should finish up this lab here.